Uh, my name is Melina Placentile and I am the sole proprietor of Just the Goods, which is a handmade natural vegan skincare project that emphasizes natural ingredients, transparency in labeling, and just as much as I can being as ethical as possible to make products for everyone that are affordable and actually work. Um, one of the things that I would say makes Just the Goods special is the fact that everything is produced with vegetable and mineral based ingredients, therefore everything is vegan. Another thing that's special about it is that it is all made with my own two hands. So uh, everything is carefully crafted in small batches, there's no artificial preservatives added to these things, they're not sitting on a shelf in a warehouse for years and years and years. You know that what you're getting is fresh and that there's an honest commitment to what is inside the bottles. Because a lot of packaging Packaging seems to editorialize a lifestyle. This is for this type of person, this is for that type of person. I think that's kind of unnecessary and it also creates boxes between people. So what I care to do is produce things for certain skin types. Do you have acne prone skin and this is something that concerns you? Are you very sensitive to chemicals or specific types of vegetable ingredients? Um, do you have very, very dry skin? This is what I'm more interested in addressing as opposed to products for XYZ people. So that's why I say Just the Goods are made for everyone. One of the key motivating factors behind Just the Goods is affordability. I found it very uncomfortable that when I was starting to learn about natural, healthier alternatives that I'd go to a health food store and I honestly couldn't afford the products. And it started to be a sort of dividing factor of who could afford to take care of themselves and who couldn't. And the idea that if you are on a very strict budget that you have to fill your mouth with toxic toothpaste or you know it's just really not fair <laughs> so when I started developing just the goods I was very very conscious of every single decision I was making to maintain the lowest overhead possible there's a number of different ways that I do that one of them is through the packaging of the products I made sure that I didn't have too many types of bottles so that I could reuse things one example is for example um, the moisturizer you can also find toner in this format or products that have a spray top. It's the same type of top used on different types of bottles. This helped me keep my costs low. The other thing about not spending money on custom packaging or even custom labels for that matter is that I was able to achieve a very clean, let's almost say neutral aesthetic so that we're actually paying more attention to what's inside the packaging rather than what's on the exterior. Another aspect about the packaging being in this format is that it doesn't editorialize the type of people that are expected to be using it. They're not too frilly, they're not this faux masculinity. It's for everybody and by keeping something that anyone, regardless of their lifestyle, they can just say, this is for me because it doesn't tell me who I am. That I felt was a really important thing about Just the Goods as well. I can speak for myself, but I can probably also give a wish list of things that I would like to see in personal care products generally, and that is I would like them to be healthy for our bodies, for the environment, and even for our emotional state of being. I think a lot of advertising is about creating an absolutely unattainable standard so that we feel crappy and buy things trying to fill a hole in our heart. <laughs> and so I really think that it's important to just separate that from personal care. We don't need to be conned into buying things. So apart from everything about ingredients, I would really love a world of personal care where we aren't made to feel bad in order to buy something. I put a lot of research, time and effort into establishing what the packaging for Just the Goods would be. I started off using glass only because I wanted to avoid plastics, but of course there's a couple downsides to that. One of them is the weight of shipping. The other is the potential for them to break, especially if people have pets or small children. The idea of glass in the bathroom is just absolutely out of the question. So in response to these concerns, I started doing research on what was considered the safest form of plastic, still real of course that it is a petroleum based thing but I discovered that HDPE plastic is considered one of the most stable particularly when it's not heated and since the products that I put into those packages are not hot that maintains the integrity of the plastic um, because the plastic inherently does not contain BPA that's definitely a bonus I'm using here a uh, tin that's completely reusable I should hold this up this is a body dusting powder this is a reusable and refillable tin. The uh, body dusting powder refills come in a 
little plastic bag this size, and I'm still doing more research into finding out an alternative to this altogether. Uh, and then the powder puff is also handmade by a woman that I discovered on Etsy. Her name is Kimberly Creason, and her website is called The Witch's Spindle. And she makes body products herself, but I loved her powder puffs, so we use those. That's another example of a handmade item. And hmm, what else can I say about the packaging? Oh yes, um, this type of jar right here, it's a conventional canning jar. It's the Bernardin one that everyone sees everywhere. I found that it is really resistant to temperature. It's sturdy. You don't have to worry about it dropping on a carpet or wood floor. It's safe in that way. And it is also completely reusable. If you live in Winnipeg, you can bring this jar back to me and you can get a dollar off towards your next purchase. Or if you live far away, and of course shipping an empty jar back is probably not the best idea for reducing a carbon footprint, you can give it to someone who makes jam. <laughs> it's completely reusable. I was motivated to learn more about what is actually in skincare products when out of the blue my partner developed dermatitis of the worst order. He's used to me talking about this so he's no longer embarrassed by it, <laughs> but his face was red and rashy and patchy and just so physically uncomfortable. Um, it took us a while to really figure out what was going, uh, or going on. At first we thought it was, oh, the climate in Winnipeg is so dry and coming from Ontario, this is the problem. But we were able to figure out that it was the conventional shaving cream in a can that he was using. It's so full of petroleum and fragrances and parabens and all kinds of awful things. So I started doing some research about what alternatives he could use. So we looked at shaving oils and uh, on the David Suzuki website they had a recipe for whipping cream and oatmeal and mint. It worked but it smelled awful and we don't have dairy in our household so it was kind of awkward going to the store to buy whipped cream for shaving cream. So I finally thought well you know maybe I'll try making a shaving soap. Just did a little bit of research online, kind of guesstimated what I thought would be suitable and the first go was perfect. He loved it. His skin cleared up immediately. We started giving it to friends to try and everyone just thought, this is awesome. You need to sell this. Uh, and at the same time, I begun to educate myself, not only about what the ingredients were in skincare products, but also corporate ownership. Who owns these so-called natural brands? probably won't go into that in detail, but I was definitely heartbroken when I found out that my favorite lip balm was no longer what I thought it was. Same thing with my favorite toothpaste. So I took it on myself as a bit of a challenge, like if I made that shaving cream, maybe I can make something else. So I made toothpaste, came out fairly good, some tweaks. The lip balm was perfect the first time, a little bit of re re uh, reverse engineering. I was really happy with the results and then it was definitely a challenge. What can I make next? What can I make next? And I just found it really I, very affirming to know that I could take responsibility for not only my health, but also have such an active part in my partner's health improving and my friends. And the support and feedback that I was getting was fantastic, especially from friends who had allergies or had intolerances but didn't realize how severe they were until they used a different type of product altogether. And they're like, I don't have that weird rash behind my ear anymore, or whatever it was. So um, yeah, now it definitely it's like, what can I make next? What can I make next? I take special requests and I don't get to do as much R&D as quickly as I used to, but when I sort of need a break from production, it's like, oh yeah, dry shampoo, let me give that a go. And that's something that's actually coming very soon. This little kit here is a fantastic introduction for anyone who might be a little bit hesitant about changing their current skincare regimen, but it includes here a shaving cream, a vegan shaving brush. In this case, there's a little facial moisturizer, but it could also be a toothpaste in a sample size, and there's a lip balm. Uh, one of the things that I, I mean, I don't make the shaving brush, but I love it so much, is that originally I was using whatever I could get online and it was a wood handle which was nice but it was boar bristle and I didn't want to proceed with that so I finally sourced a really great one online and it is by a world famous brush maker called Omega. They are very well known for their shaving brushes but also for their paint brushes they only branched out into making synthetic bristles very recently, but it is still a fantastic brush. Uh, it will last a lifetime, especially if it's um, 
taken care of in a really simple way which is to hold it upside down after you're finished with it so that way the water runs out from the bottom and it doesn't deteriorate the adhesive inside. Um, but the fact that this is not intended to be in a landfill in a few months from now makes me feel really good about using it or offering it and that's also the thoughts behind the powder puff too. I work with other makers when I feel that we have uh, similar values. We don't want things to be wasteful, we want things to be healthy and that's why I feel good about these products included with my own. I learned a number of years earlier to be very, very careful reading ingredients because I am allergic to dairy, uh, but prior to that, I had eating disorders for a number of years as a teenager and it really messed up my stomach and I'm very sensitive to a lot of things that I eat. So it's very common for people to realize, oh, I'm intolerant to gluten or I can't eat nuts. But then realizing that putting ingredients onto our body, it's really not that much different than eating them because our skin, while a barrier between the inside and outside, it still readily absorbs things. So um, that's one of the other reasons why I felt that it was really important to have a very transparent ingredient listing and very carefully select what I was working with. If I wouldn't eat it, I don't want to put it in here. I'm not saying that Just the Goods products are edible, but you look at the ingredients of some things, for example, the nut-free body butter. It's cocoa butter, which I do a lot of raw vegan cooking. Cocoa butter shows up all the time. It's a fantastic chocolate flavor. It's just great. Um, there's a little bit of cornstarch in there. There's some apricot kernel oil and grapeseed oil. These are all things you end up finding in healthy salad dressings. Again, I'm not saying go ahead and eat the body butter, but I like to know that the ingredients I'm choosing are things that I can feel good about inside, outside, every side. <laughs>